new 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 Remember when he was here on the show yeah. and he talked about Altium and open source hardware and like all sorts of cool stuff. Well, um, we had the proof of the book and now the real deal is here. It's the Hardware Hacker, Adventures in Making and Breaking Hardware by Bunny. Lots of pages. Quote from Lady Ada. I thought I'd show these things off. That's right, we are. This book is super cool. Yep. Okay. Look. Probably going to give one away tonight. And uh, special thanks to Bunny for asking you to do a quote. Bunny is the ultimate tour guide of hardware hacking and as it stands today, with an eye towards the sublime art of how things are really made. Let's go to the overhead. Okay, so this is the uncorrected proof. Yeah. It's a little easier to page through, but he talks about like Chumby and like how it was designed. Like, so it goes from like, you know, circuit board layouts to how to build your own laptop to injections molding and like e waste and um, yeah. rights, intellectual property models. Yeah. I mean, like, it's just awesome. It everything. Like, stickers and, like, testers. Yeah. It's just, like, you will learn so much. I have a whole collection of bunny stuff here. Look, we got the, this is the yeah. guide. We have that guide. I have the open source laptop down here. Yeah, this is neat. It's, like, how um, USB keys are made. So yep. this is the proof and some injection molding stuff. Yeah. Um, and then this is now the Now we got final, the real deal. Yeah, we have the final book. This is the corrected one. <laughs> Well, I didn't actually find any um, issues in the previous No, but, you know, they send it out to people. Oh, you know. But it, it has a just nicer printing. Like, the, the printing is clearer. Um, the photos are, are much crisper. And then they just use a different printing process. Um, you know, hand-picking versus pick-and-place. Um, how to, like, spec LEDs and, and variations. I mean, yeah. it's just, like, everything. It's, it's like how to make a phone for $12. I mean, this yeah. is just cool stuff. Um, open hardware materials I, I don't know i just think i just love the kind of books and articles if you're that watching the show this is a book for you bunny right i mean you'll you'll love it uh, guaranteed okay um i loved reading it it has a little bit of the stuff and got this like really cool circuit board print yeah it has a little bit of stuff that's from his blog um so if you like his blog you really like this book but it's more in depth he, we wrote studios.com we wrote a lot of these articles and added more details so uh check it out we have it in stock okay it is cool. Next up, Lady Ada, it is here. It is a super cute bot. And this bot wants to give you something. Candy. Give me a candy. Candy. This is Curie Bot. Candy, candy. Give me more candy. Okay. It's, it's a loop. Yeah. Uh, this All is right. Curie Bot. This is, um, you know, we have this lovely little ro round robot kit. And uh, it, it's great for all sorts of robot projects. And so we thought, well, let's put a um, Curie and Arduino 101 on top. And the nice thing about the Arduino 101 is it has, you know, accelerometer and uh, gyro, I think, on it, or magnetometer. Mm -hmm. It has, um, you know, it's Arduino compatible. It has this Curie x86 core from Intel. Um, it has all the stuff you need for Arduino, like USB serial conversion and, and power supply and all that. Uh, and also has Bluetooth. So what's neat is that you can make a Bluetooth robot without needing like a Bluetooth shield or like, you know, a, a special version of an Arduino. It's, it's a fully supported Arduino and it has wireless control. So we um, have a great video and a tutorial yeah. that goes with it. Do you want to go to the overhead? Park. Um, or are these photos good enough? I think the photos are actually okay. really good. They're, right. It's a little tough to get on the overhead. Plus, we also have a really good guide and videos. Um, pick it up. Uh, we have a kit. It's great if you want to add more Arduino shields on top to add more capability, which is what we like about this. Um, just power it with a 9-volt, a couple yeah. of AA batteries, and you're good to go. Could it's you a put a robot. screen on it or something? You can put anything you want. You can put really? a screen. You can put a camera. Could you put a, a phone? You could put a phone a module. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's compatible with all our shields, so. Right. Next right. up. Sparkle. We have, uh, well, we didn't Sparkle. carry at first the um, uh, European, African, Asian 3G um, Electron IoT kit, but we do now. So check it out. Uh, this pack is great for people who are not in the Americas and want to use the 3G Electron. So we have that pack in the store it's a now. worldwide effort to do IoT. It is a worldwide effort, but unfortunately the way 3G chipsets work is you have a different chipset yeah. in the Americas versus in Europe or Asia. So check yeah. the countries list to make sure if you're not 100% sure, yeah. if you're like in a, you know, a Guam or something, I don't know exactly whether Every that's location considered Asia or considered seems America. to have a different thing that you need to be aware of for phone stuff. Check the frequencies. Yeah. 
Uh, but now we have this version that has the, the universal particle IoT yeah. SIM card and everything. It's a great way to add cellular IoT projects, upload through the IDE, so you don't even, you can deploy code remotely. Check the frequency, Kenneth. Okay. Yes. Next up, Lady Ada, a um, couple more photos. It just shows the bottom of yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, we just put these in right before the show started. Yeah. Oh! Potentiometers. We have three different kinds. We're getting more. This is just the first shipment. So we have, this is a dual gang 10K linear pot. Um, if you are used to potentiometers, you know, you have 10K across them and then the middle pin varies in resistance uh, from, you know, the beginning to the end of the strip of conductive material. Um, this is a dual gang pot. So you get two totally separate potentiometers. Um, but when you turn the knob, both of them kind of match each other. So this is good when you have... Um, two sets of separate circuits you want to adjust. Uh, often it's used in like a stereo audio system or if you want, mm -hmm. you have two signals and you want to attenuate them the same way. Treble and bass. Treble and bass, for example. Volume. Left and right. Mm. Um, so, wah, wah. Yeah. Okay. Left, right, whatever. Uh, also, I mean, there's multiple uses. If you need one, you'll need one. Okay. So we have that. Then we also have um, this, which is a dual gang potentiometer with a switch. So this has a switch in it. So when you turn it all the way like down, oh wait, go back one. Oh, it goes click? Yeah, it goes click and it turns off. So those back two pins, you see these two pins in the back? That's a switch, mechanically yeah. separate than the two potentiometers. So it's different than that, I see. That's, That's cool. a dual pot. Yeah. This is a dual pot with switch. Okay. So also very handy if you want to hmm. like have the whole circuit turn off. I like potentiometers with switches because they're very intuitive. Yeah. And um, it's, like a key, it, it's, a, it's a good UI element because most people understand that you turn all the way down. Also, you don't have the thing. You don't want a touch screen for that. No. Also, if you want, if you have something where like the volume is set and then, you know, you don't want to turn it on and it's like really loud. You always know when you turn it on, it'll always be really quiet and then you turn it up. Okay. And then we have another one. This is a single potentiometer with a switch. Different style. It has these like nubs that come out the back. Um, and it's also got these long right angle pins. So you can like plug into a breadboard on the right angle, like right angle saw. I, I, for some reason, the factory was like, we don't have the straight style, but so I just got these for now. And maybe Do you have a favorite if you had to go on a desert island and pick one? Well, no, you can't beat the dual gang pot with switch because it does everything. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying you like this one. Yeah. It's okay. got everything. I like potentiometer switches. I had like a, you know, I made like a bike light once and I had, you know, like it was you couldn't get potential switches which is like really hard to get like now you, they're a little easier but at the time it was like they're like yeah. six dollars each but I it was really I remember I needed nice. one I, I had I maybe got it at Radio Shack because they used to have it in the big bins or something yeah. it's hard to get yeah. Anyways, all three of these potentiometers have the T18 splines. It's kind of our standard spline set for potentiometers. So we have knobs that go with these. They don't come with knobs. They do come with panel mount screws. So they're not really designed for breadboard use, especially this one. They just don't, there's just too many pins. But you can panel mount them and solder wires to it. There's not really breadboard friendly dual ganged or switch pots. It's just like you kind of, it's like you kind of pull away from the breadboard friendliness. But they're panel mount. You can, you know, screw them onto a case or something. Okay. Easily. When is it going to have a NeoPixel in it? <laughs> we always get that. Working on that. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's cool. News. Um, all right. So the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, is this board. And Blinka. And Blinka. This is the... And Circuit Python. Circuit Python. Yeah, this is a Blinka, our Circuit Python mascot. So we finally have our first board that is designed for use with CircuitPython. Now, this is a Feather M0 Express. It is basically, well, it is pin compatible with the Feather M0s that we have in the store. So if you have like the Feather M0 Basic, this is pin compatible, but it adds two extra components. You can see in the middle there, it adds this eight SOIC uh -huh. flash chip. It's an SPI flash. And it also adds a NeoPixel. Now, you don't need to use this with CircuitPython. You can actually use this perfectly fine in Arduino and you get like this two megabyte flash chip. You can use it for data logging or storing the yeah, files. Yeah. Get a NeoPixel. They're available on pins two, three, four, and eight. Um, lovely. You know, you want to have extra storage or you want to, you know, because the EEPROM, there's an EEPROM on the Feather M0. So if you want to store stuff locally, this is nice. It's a couple dollars more. Yeah. However, what this is designed for is use with CircuitPython. So that two megabyte SPI car, um, 
flash is actually your disk drive, and that's where you store your scripts. Yeah. So when you use CircuitPython and you plug this into your computer, it shows up like as a two megabyte USB key, and then your Python files are stored in the device. Yeah. So it's like a, a better Arduino or a super duper Python microcontroller. It's like a super hardcore Arduino board, but it's also a really good beginner Python board. That's neat. Yeah. That's cool. So you know, I've said this before, but that is a neat goal that I think we all came up with together, which was, what if you didn't need an IDE? What if you can just plug in and it shows up as a drive? You double click it, you edit the code right there, and that's it, there's nothing in a text file. What I like about the CircuitPython, and again, CircuitPython's in beta, we're still working on it, so you know, if you're, if you're excited, you can absolutely use it, but it's just like things might be changing, so please be patient with us as it's we- It's like the developer edition. It's developing, yeah. but what's nice is it comes with also a, also a special bootloader, it's a, it's a beta bootloader that shows up as a disk drive, so this is a mass storage bootloader. So what's nice is if you want to update CircuitPython or use it with Arduino code, you can drag and drop files onto the bootloader. This is the future. Which is really neat. Um, we'll talk about that bootloader later. It's, you don't it's, need to get a JTAG? You don't need a JTAG. You don't need to run any <laughs> command line utilities. Okay. You can program it from a Chromebook. You can you can actually program it from an Android device, yeah. which is pretty neat because it shows up, shows up as a disk drive. Yeah, one of the things I'm looking forward to is when students are using the Circuit Playground version of uh, CircuitPython, um, the kids can uh, keep all their files, their libraries, they can bring it home with them. And yeah, just there's, shows no, up like, as a USB there's drive. no Dropbox or like, oh, yeah. mail the files. No, it's, it's, on, like, it's on the device. It's on the device. It gets yeah. stored on the device, which is a really um, neat idea. So what I like about this is, it's, you know, we're releasing it. You can use it as an Arduino device just fine. In fact, the demo that comes with is just Arduino code. Yeah. But you can kind of go between the two worlds. I, yeah. I like this flexibility of like, I want to use Python because I'm a beginner. And then maybe you're like, well, I want to do it more well, advanced. I got a drawer Arduino stuff that I already wrote code for. You can always upgrade to Arduino as well. That's cool. Okay. All right. And with that, Lady Ada, guess what? That was new products. Good work. Perfect timing. Yeah. Okay. Next up. Uh,